taken a trip down memory lane with some people who've really changed the world. Lee Felsenstein, Harry Garland, Bob Marsh, Jeff Raskin, Alan Baum, and uh, Steve Wozniak. Six of the people, there were many, of course, who were involved in the, uh, uh, the Homebrew Computer Club, one of the first computer... You said it wasn't the first computer club. Well, I was so talking the, about the, the People's Computer Center, which was sort of a drop-in center that had their own computer. So you're talking about how hard it was for anybody to play with a computer, but right. the People's Computer Center, you could drop in and use a computer and learn how to program. It, was it a, a microcomputer? I mean, no. Oh, no, they had a PDP-8, PDP PDP which, PDP which was the first microcomputer. It was a, a mini-computer, really. Mini computer, yeah, yeah. sorry. And, and, and you were writing in Fortran? What were you? <sighs> they were teaching basic. vocal. Basic, basic, and basic, basic and the games vocal. are written in basic. Yeah. Now on this on this on this Altair, uh, you were programming at how? <laughs> Binary. <laughs> you're, 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 <laughs> the difference. you're flipping switches. Yeah. Flipping switches. Yeah. It's, it's pretty painful. Anyway. And what could it do? Anything? Besides a computer, a computer's a computer. It had no IO. We thought <laughs> it could blink lights. It looks like an airplane cockpit, so it must be able to fly. <laughs> <laughs> we had our expectations raised by Steve Dompier, whom I wish could have been here. Um, he. Uh, was he had that's who got that, that one of those the serial number three um, in fact he drove to Albuquerque to get it um, so he was programming the minimum it could do which was to make a sorting program mm -hmm. right? so you can sort some numbers right. you can only read the numbers out by looking at the lights there's no paper tape no there's no terminal there's no keyboard nothing connected nothing. to it nothing lights. Lights. but he had a <laughs> weather radio little radio sitting on top of it he was a pilot too so yeah. And he was listening to the radio, weather radio, and he's ran the program, and he could hear it go zip, 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 which was the loop of the program getting shorter and shorter as it did the. Uh, and it's coming out as RF, coming it's into the coming radio. It's coming out as noise that gets into the radio and comes out as music. <laughs> he did a music like program in 30 hours. No. He brought it to the th third meeting of the homebrew club. Didn't tell anybody what was going to happen. Set us up. Pushed the button and it started playing the Fool on the Hill, which was the first bit of sheet music you could find. And after that, it went into Daisy Daisy, which for oh, those of us yes. who know, was the first song ever sung by a computer anywhere in 1960 by Hal. Max Matthews. Yeah, and then Hal 9000 sang it a little later on. In that, that was what it was referring to, yeah, yes. Right. So that just opened our eyes. It's like, yes! We can actually do stuff that you know nobody would even dream of doing because, of course, you get chased out if you tried to use a real computer for he this. He did it by flipping. So he must have had blisters on his fingers. I mean, yeah. you, you yeah, had to do it, it, it over the power one. failed, and power. he had to do it again. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. Oh, the power right. failed when he first put it in, and then he had to re-enter so there, everything. Yeah, there's no memory. Right. You don't turn the thing off because you're going to have to start non, over. No, no, no flash. Well, you have to realize there wasn't much memory, so there wasn't that much you could toggle. <laughs> Right. It, it was 256 bytes. Yeah, 256 yeah. bytes. Yeah. Right. So that's not all. Each switch is a bit, so that's right. not a whole lot of switching. Yeah. And, and now you can have uh, a gigabyte in this. In that, mm -hmm. in a well, little, in a little thumb it. drive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Waz walks around with two gigabyte, uh, two gigabyte thumb drive hanging around his neck with all his software on it. Does it <laughs> <laughs> but it's. But what's interesting is you guys still even. I mean, this is primitive. This is really primitive, even compared with the, the mini computers of the day. But you still saw something in there. Was it that it was on your desktop? That it was personal? What was it? Yeah, that I, I had. I had the experience, in fact, I had the machine that you wanted. I had a, because of my university connections, I had a Data General Nova in the back of my truck. <laughs> I used to Wait a minute, around. you had a Nova Ooh. in the back of your truck? Yeah. It's too bad you didn't have a Nova, you could have a Nova in the back of your truck. <laughs> <laughs> and so I knew what it meant to have a little yeah. computer that you could take wherever you wanted, have it on your desk, wheel it, I hate to wheel it. Into, into Why did you drive around with a Nova in the back of your truck? Because it was there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was this one. You'd go into a restaurant and you'd wheel in this. No! This com this computer. You'd come in with your computer. You'd come with your computer. You'd sit at the computer <laughs> alongside the table. You put the terminal on the table and you could work while you're eating at the restaurant. We do it today. But now we do it with laptops. Of as, course. Soon, as soon as I saw this, you know, I said, uh, I said, hey, now I can actually own one. I don't right. have to use universities. Right. Even though it was considerably primitive. Did you immediately start saying, what more? Can we got to put a video display in this. Oh, place. absolutely. I mean, you got to put a terminal in there. What, what, uh, tell me about the uh, the first video display card. Was that yours, Lee? Or? Well, uh, we have to break it up. Harry's was first with a video graphics card, the okay. one you're holding. This is the Dazzler. The Dazzler. Now, is this S100? This predates that, S100. That is S100. This is S100. S100. Okay, so that's the original bus. Yeah, right. We looked at what we could find in the documentation, and finally we looked at the actual thing, the, the Altair, and we saw empty sockets. Right. And that was the future. Right. 
and Bob immediately started a company in his mind and uh, to, to fill <laughs> those sockets. technology. Yeah. Altair um, <clears throat> made the grave mistake of including a manual with all the schematics. Oh uh, my! The <laughs> yeah. Altair computer, and so it was a relatively trivial task to design equipment to run on there. What well, is called the Altair bus before it was the S100. But in a way, it was Harry and I who invented the term S100. Oh really? Yep. Yeah, yeah so Chrome Co. Of course, we, was we a... had a bit too much to drink at a trade show in Atlantic City. <laughs> And actually, we decided on the, on the airplane going there. Oh, Are there is there a hundred pins on here? Is that why yeah, it's there's a hundred pins on there? Hundred yes. pins on there. What's the S stand for? Standard. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call it the Century Bus, but he the figured that it would be better if it was a really dull name. It would take off better. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, <laughs> I like that very much. That's very good. Yeah. So Bob and I had rented a garage. Actually, before this happened, and Bob was casting around for something to build. I was just being a design consultant. Suddenly, there were things to design. Yeah. And it started out with a memory board, a ROM board, and a uh, and just a serial parallel interface. But I had published a little mimeographed specification for what I called the the Tom Swift terminal. Oh yeah. Or a convivial cybernetic device, <laughs> uh, where I basically set down in specification form what a modular bus-oriented personal computer could look like. I never built it, and in effect did the thinking about how do you couple video to this economically to get text out. And that set me up so that Bob, uh, not too much later, said, we will pay you to design the Tom Swift terminal if you design it our way. And I did. And the, that became the video display module VDM1. Um, and that was 64 characters per line, 16 lines. The screen flashed whenever you uh, used it because the memory was so slow. But that basically was copied and improved by Radio Shack for the TRS-80, and it went on to become more or less the standard uh, architecture of uh, text display. You said an interesting thing, he published the schematics. I mean, that was kind of, it was very open, and that was the spirit at the time, was a spirit of sharing, of openness, we'll show you how to do it, you do some stuff. Not everybody was thrilled about that. Uh, in fact, we're going to come back in just a bit and talk about a visit from a young man who was very unhappy, in fact, about the openness of the Homebrew Computer Club. <laughs> we'll talk about that, a young man who went on to some big things when the screensavers continues. Stay ready.